Welcome back to Baseball Without Census. Story come tonight, Burberry's Valentine's Day advert is accused of glamorizing mastectomies. Should brands be activists like this or distinct to selling handbags? We'll debate that later. But first, she's been nicknamed Christian Mum. Izzy Montague launched legal action in 2019 against her son's London school over an LGBT pride parade. Tomorrow, her case goes to court. It's the first case of its kind in the UK. She will claim a pride parade held at the school promoted gay lifestyles and indoctrinated children and her child was four at the time. It's a debate raging on both sides of the Atlantic. In the US, 78% of parents do not believe sexual orientation or gender identity should be taught to young children. And now Donald Trump has, of course, uh, got involved and said it's going to be a central part of his bid to return to the White House, branding gender ideology a cult. We're going to stop the left-wing radical racists and perverts who are trying to indoctrinate our youth. And we're going to get their Marxist hands off of our children. We're going to defeat the cult of gender ideology and reaffirm that God created two genders called men and women. Well, Ava, I can feel bristling to my side here. <laughs> Joined also by uh, Paula and Adrian, who's also bristling. Richard Tyus, I don't know, probably nodding away. Also with me now is LGBT rights campaigner Peter Tatchell and the Fox News contributor Tommy Lehrer. Well, welcome to a stellar panel, I've got to say, for this. Uh, all right, uh, Tommy Lehrer, let me start with you. Because it's been a big burning issue in America now, raging away for quite some time. It's one of the reasons, I think, that Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, has seen such surging popularity, potentially heading him uh, to the White House uh, in this battle over what you can teach at school with young people in relation to this kind of thing. What is your view? Listen, we do not need to be teaching this radical LGBT grooming agenda in schools. It's one thing if parents want to do that on their own time, that is a parent's right to do that, with some exceptions, of course. But to bring this in and bake this into a public school curriculum is wrong. And meanwhile, Chinese students are learning quantum physics, and we've got our students learning how to twerk from drag queens. It's not going to end well. This is grooming. This is ideological mind control. It's introducing this to a group of individuals especially to young kids who have no business learning any of this sexually explicit material. This is not about being anti-gay or as the incorrectly labeled Ron DeSantis' bill, don't say gay. This is about keeping this out of the classroom because it does not belong there. This is a grooming agenda. It is extreme. It is explicit. It does not belong in front of young children at their school. They should be learning reading, writing, and arithmetic, not this filth. Well, but I think you've made your position quite clear there, Ms. Lehrer. Uh, I, I imagine, Peter Tatchell, you agree with every word of that? Well, here in Britain, we know from research that nearly half of all lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender pupils in our schools have been bullied. Bullied, teased, some, sometimes subjected to physical violence simply because of their sexuality or their gender identity. So this education in British schools is designed to combat bullying and to promote understanding and acceptance. None of the teaching in British schools is sexually explicit, nor is any of the material in United States schools. Uh, it is all about promoting understanding and tolerance. So what's just been said is a complete misrepresentation of the teaching. And I think that any parent would want their child to be brought up in a school where understanding and acceptance of difference is valued, where people are not bullied because of their sexuality. Okay, here's what I would say to that, identity. Peter. I, look, I, I don't disagree with some of what you just said. I think the issue here is age. I've, had, I've got four kids. You've all gone through, obviously, all this. I just think the idea that at four, any child should be exposed to anything like this is ridiculous. I really do. There is nowhere near old enough to, uh, to understand or even begin to understand any of the stuff that this is being taught in this way. So although this woman in this court case did this on religious grounds, um, she's a Catholic and this is what her, you know, she believes her religion has taught her to, to believe, that's one debate. But actually the wider debate for me is what age should we be teaching kids about things like gender identity? And should they be compelled to go on pride parades and so on at the age of four? I don't think so. No one is compelling any child to go on a pride parade anywhere, not in school, not in the street, nowhere. And when it comes to teaching, the teaching is not about sex at a young age. 
It's about relationships and the fact that some kids will be in uh, married heterosexual families, some will be in single families, some will be in extended families, and some will be in same-sex families. It's all about different families that kids in our schools are part of. And of course, all those kids should feel loved and appreciated. The essence of this teaching is about love and respect for other people. It's not, it's not about sex at all. OK, let's bring in the panel here. Paula? Good evening. I completely agree with Peter, and I'm really concerned that uh, a commentator could use the words radical and grooming when we're having a very sensible conversation about helping children to understand who they are. What well, they 70, as we saw that poll, 78% of Americans would share a lot of the views that Tommy Lehren expressed there. They do not want to see kids age four getting bombarded with this kind of ideology at school. But what kind of ideology? What exactly are we talking about? And if you listen to Peter, well, he we're explains talking, it okay, very I'll give, an I'll give an example. When you start teaching kids... I mean, the BBC, for example, had a, one of their teaching videos said there were over 100 genders. The BBC should not be teaching children there are 100 genders. One of them was astrogender, which is an affinity with the stars, right? The ones flying I, around the moon. I, 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 right? I'm, so, so I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I do actually think that children should not be exposed to that kind of clout well, trap. I don't, I don't can we let, the curriculum, can we let children be that children? Particularly at that, that age. Mean, Come on. Richard, there's, there's, they're growing no, up in households. No, there's an age, there's an appropriate... Then let their hang families, on, there's an appropriate let their families age. have the there conversations There are millions they of feel parents have who them. are desperately concerned about what is being taught in primary school. And the truth is, we don't know what's but being taught for far too much. you've just heard about the high percentage of children who suffer bullying, who are vulnerable, but, where that's, safeguarding that's about, is that's about, very relevant that's about to teaching their teaching and their empathy. That's got nothing to do with gender ideology. Without having a pride parade. That's what this is about. Because it's not the, about it, being proud to be gay. No, it's about being teach, proud to you be can you. Teach, right. yeah. You can speak tolerance and understanding, but not at four, five, six, seven, Fine, eight, I don't eight or nine. We actually do do that. Aside tolerant. from all of this, we actually teach sex quite explicitly in heterosexual relationships from a really young age. You actually have children in nativity plays where you're playing a mother who has an immaculate conception and then gives birth to a baby. What are you teaching about? And you're how talking do they about sex. If you've ever, as exactly. I have done four times, had kids who've appeared in these things, they yeah. thought they haven't got a Scooby Doo, what any of that well, means. Well, I grew yeah. up Catholic right? and, and no I knew one's what teaching, sex was from no a very young teaching. age. Well, I'm sure you did. But, <laughs> but what, what's the purpose of that story? The purpose of that story is love. Yes. The purpose of that that's story fine. is bringing that's people fine. together. That's and fine. that's what the four-year-old is being taught. Well, I want to bring I want to bring back Tommy Lehren here because we've had a really scandalous case in the last few days, Tommy, here in the UK of a transgender person uh, who committed two rapes when identifying as a man, rapes of women. Uh, and before the, c the court case started, he had transitioned to become a woman and then was tried under a female name. And then when, when he was convicted, this person, I'm using that term deliberately, I think, because I, I'm unconvinced by this transition process. When this person was then convicted, the brought in a law which allowed uh, this trans person to then be put into a woman's prison as a woman who had literally got a penis and raped two women. So that not only were they being punished by being put into a place where they could attack other women, but they were being treated as if they were legitimately exactly the same as a woman born to a female biological body. What do you make of that? P Piers, you're wrong. You're, you're wrong. Yeah, this Piers, is a problem that we are encountering. Okay, in Peter, the US. I'll, Peter, I'll come to you. You can correct well, me. Was, well, Peter, Peter, you can correct was, me. All right, well, I'm going to. Hang on. Let's go to Peter first. She, correct, me, correct me on what I said that was wrong. She was put in. She was put into a woman's prison, but in a segregation unit mm -hmm. where she had no contact with other women. But she shouldn't have been put in there right. at all. A rapist must never. A, a rapist should never have contact or be a potential risk to other women. Mm -hmm. She's now been moved to a male prison, quite rightly, uh, and again, she will have no contact with women. Why do you say, so she'd be, why do you say she say has been moved to a male prison quite rightly, though? Because that immediately, to me, sounds incredibly confusing. You're saying she, so you presumably think that she is a woman, and yet she is being moved to a male prison because nobody else actually now thinks she is actually a woman. She's a man with a penis who raped two women. I mean, that's the reality. Even her ex, or well, his or her or she, person, she, whatever, their ex-wife said that this is all a complete scam to game the system and get into a softer prison. Well, I think you're probably right. 
I think it does look like the person is gaming the system. But, you know, the fact is that the transfer to a woman's prison was not based on any new law introduced by the Scottish Government. It was based on existing policy, which was to respect a person's gender identity, but not, under any circumstances, put someone who'd committed crimes against women in contact with other women, and that's why she was in a segregation unit. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I don't think I, what I said was wrong, because by, so new I... Law, I mean, by new law, I meant this is a law that's come in in recent years, which allowed that gender identity to be enforced in the way that it was enforced. And I, Tommy Lahren, I just have a massive problem with people... This is what I've been saying from the start about this trans debate. Y the, moment, the moment you open the door to this kind of abuse by people, it will happen. You know, it's a bit like cheating in sport. Once you allow it, everyone starts right. to cheat, right? You're going to get a load of people who, are, you know, male rapists, male sex offenders, what's utopia for them if they get convicted? Mm -hmm. Being taken from a men's prison with their pariahs and put into a woman's prison surrounded by people they can attack. But there are over 200... Yeah, so trans. I want to be very clear about this. Not everybody who is transgender does something like this. My turn to talk. Not everybody who is transgender is going to do something like this. But you're opening the door for this. And even beyond that, well, we're not even talking about a women's or a men's prison. Let's just talk about here in the USA, and I know in the UK as well, when they're having biological men compete in women's sports, using the same locker rooms, exposing themselves to the female athletes that are often in high school. It's inappropriate. It doesn't belong in schools. It doesn't belong in society. This free for all you can identify as anything you can abuse the system you can abuse this whole notion of gender identity it's gone too far and to even criticize it now has been labeled bigotry it's not it's reality okay. we need to protect people we need to especially protect young people well i, I actually agree with all that uh, peter tatchell i mean i know i've been watching some interviews you've been doing i do think you've been you know on a a mission of discovery yourself about the perils here of this, particularly in this case in Scotland, of this rapist. But if I was to ask you now a question which has become the most dangerous, controversial question in the world for some reason, you know, what is a woman to you? A trans woman is a woman, but not the same as biological women. There's a difference between biological sex and gender identity. Both are equally valid, both equally deserve respect and equal rights. There should not be a competition between biological women and trans women. They both suffer from very elevated levels of domestic violence, sexual assault, including rape. That applies to both trans women and other women as well. So let's find the common ground rather than fighting each other. The enemy is misogyny. That's the enemy, not trans women. Well, I think the enemy is misogyny in many ways, but I think the enemy is also virtue signalling because the idea that you can let trans women who have massively superior physical bodies compete in professional sport against women born to female inferior physical bodies, I think is for the birds. Um, but we will... Actually, that's an unfortunate turn of phrase. Uh, no offence to anyone who's offended by my use of the word birds. Um, but thank you very much, Peter Tatchell. Great to have you on the programme. Thank you, Tommy Lahren. Great to see you.